Good afternoon, Buford Middle School students. This is Ms. Smith. We're going to start off with our Unit 1, Accentuate the Negative. First, we're going to go to Lesson 1. Lesson 1 talks about comparing and ordering decimals. Our essential question is how do I compare and order decimals? We're going to start off with some vocabulary. Our first vocabulary word is decimals. Decimals are a way to represent fractions. In the example, we have the decimal point three three three. We look at the last place value in the decimals. It is the thousandths place. The thousand represents the denominator in the fraction. So I write a thousand in the denominator. The number to the right of the decimal, 333, represents the numerator. So my fraction would be 333 over a thousand. The next word is place value. Place value is the value of a digit based on its position in a number. If we look at our example, we know our whole numbers, ones, tens, and hundreds. On our decimal place values, the first one is the tenths, then the hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millionths, and so on. Our next word is repeating decimal. A repeating decimal is a decimal number in which a digit or group of digits repeats without end. So in our example, 3856 repeats throughout the decimal and does not come to an end. A terminating decimal is a decimal that contains a finite number of digits, and all that means is it comes to an end. Our example is 0.25. It doesn't repeat, and it doesn't keep going on forever. Now we're going to talk about ordering decimals. When we're ordering decimals, it's very important that you look at the directions. It will tell you in which way to go. Ours says order from least to greatest. So we are going to start with the smallest number. And I look first at the uh, whole number place. In this case, here's the three, a four, a four, three, and four. And decide out of those numbers which one is smallest. Well, I know three is smaller than four, so I'm going to start with my whole numbers of three. Since I have more than one, I'm then going to look at the tenths place in those numbers. I have an eight and I have a four. I know that four is smaller than eight, so 3.48 will be my least number. I mark it out when I'm finished so I know I won't reuse it. Then the only other whole number with three would be my next number, so 3.84 and then mark it out. All the others have four as a whole number, so I'm now going to look in that tenths place and see that I have a four, an eight, and a three. I know that three is the smallest, so I'll put 4.38, mark it out, then four, so 4.4, .4, and then finally four point eight three and there it is from least to greatest let's look at the second example in this example they all have five as their whole number so I'm going to go and look at the tenths place first and see if I can find the smallest number I have seven eight six seven and six well, I know six is the smallest out of those numbers, and I also notice I have six in two different places. So now I have to move to the hundredths place. Well, 5.6 doesn't have a number in the hundredths place, so I can fill it in with a zero. Now I can compare the two. I have an eight and I have a zero. I know that zero is smaller than eight, so I'm going to write down 5.6 as my least number and then mark it out. Next would be 5.68. Then I look back at the tenths place. I have a 7, 8, and 7. Well, I know 7 is smaller, and I have two of those, so I have to look at the hundredths place. I know that 1 is smaller than 9, so 
5.71 is the next number, cross it out, then 5.79, and finally the only one left is 5.8. Now it's your turn. I want you to pause the video and complete the next two by ordering from least to greatest. The next thing we're going to talk about is comparing decimals. It's kind of like we did when we were ordering, but this time we're telling whether or not one is less than, greater than, or equal to. I'm going to look at the first one. I have 6.5 compared to 6.45. Again, they both have 6 as a whole number, so I'm going to look in the tenths place. And this one has a 5, this one has a 4. And I know that 5 is greater than 4. So 6 and 5 tenths must be greater than 6 and 45 hundredths. For number 2, they both have 12 as a whole number, so I'm going to start looking in the tenths place. I have a 4, but I also have a 4 over here. Now I have to look at the hundredths. I have a 3 and a 3. Now the thousandths. 1, 1. 10 thousandths. 2, 1. Well here they're different and I know that 2 is greater than 1 so 12.4312 is greater than 12.43112. Even though this number has more decimal places this number is larger. Number three, I have a six in the tenths place on both of my numbers, so I need to look at the hundredths. This one doesn't have a hundredths place, so I can add a zero. I know that zero is less than one, so 0.6 or six tenths is less than Chandler Kelly 61 to the front office, Chandler Kelly to the front office. Now it's your turn. I want you to pause the video and complete one through three by saying if the statement is less than, greater than, or equal to. Now we're gonna talk about rounding decimals. When we round, I want you to remember the saying, four or less, let it rest. If it's five or more, let it score. So when it says round to the nearest one, that means the whole number one. So that's the number I'm looking to see if I can round. I'm going to look at the number directly behind it. In this case, it's the tenths place. If it's four or less, I'm going to let it rest. If it's five or more, I'm going to let it score. This is five or more, so that means that this number is going to go up. I'm going to round up, which would be 18. Number two, I'm going to round to the nearest thousandths place, which is this place right here. In order to do that, I have to look at the ten thousandths place, the one directly behind it, and do my saying. Four or less, let it rest. Five or more, let it score. Three is four or less, so I'm going to let it rest. So it would be 12 point five five zero. For number three, I'm going to round to the nearest hundredth, which is this place right here. I look at the thousandths place, the one directly behind it, to see if it's going to stay the same or if it's going to go up in value. Five is five or more, so that means that this number will score. Well, in order for nine to go up, that's going to make it two point 9 would turn into 10, so I add 1 to the tenths place, and that would be 3. So 2.3 would be rounding to the nearest hundredth. Now it's your turn. I want you to pause the video and complete 1, 2, and 3 on your own paper.